You can f hey. off. You can go as well. Hey, Bring okay, your okay. Back down and, well, what are you going to do? Hey, no, no, what are you no. going to do? I'm getting off. G'day, you good mother the Buttsman here. And across the globe right now, there are many incredible journalists. Some who risk their lives on a daily basis to give us the news that may change our lives. Others who without them would leave the public an uneducated mess. They may uncover political chaos, discover murderers, or perhaps even find themselves in the middle of a military coup. Now these journalists exist all over the world. In Australia, we take the best of the best and we put them on one TV show. Ladies and gentlemen, that is known as a current affair. No, 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 f you, f you, get the f away now, or we'll sort you out. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, I love a current affair, but I'll tell you what, there's one thing I love more, and that's today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Safety and security are two very important aspects of daily life. Every single day online, you are under threat from dirty soy boys trying to do you harm. Most internet users aren't even aware of the amount of surveillance and data mining done with their personal information on a daily basis. Don't you wish there was someone who could help you? Well, there is and their name is Surfshark VPN. Surfshark turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place for you. Do you know what geo-blocking is? Disney Plus and these type of streaming services, they only let you watch certain films and certain TV shows when you are from certain parts of the world. That is disgusting. Access shouldn't be tied to your geographical location. It's rubbish. But Surfshark gives you all the access that you could ever need. Just connect to the service and refresh the page. Access granted. Ladies and gentlemen, I use Surfshark every single day when I start up my laptop. It's, it's a must-have. Use the promo code BUTSMAN and get 83% off and three extra months for free. That is insane. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is no risks. Surf by your own set of rules ladies and gentlemen. The link is in the description. Thank you very much Surfshark for your support and ladies and gentlemen let's get back to the video. Anyone who's ever watched A Current Affair in Australia knows that sometimes the best episodes are when people get violent towards the reporters. Now I am by no means suggesting that people should be violent towards anyone or reporters. But if you're going to be violent towards someone, at least let me watch it on TV while I'm eating me dinner. So you're being a big bully to me now as well. Mad boss. Ah, memories. But one of the more intense altercations happened just recently when an absolute enormous monster of a gym dude chased a little reporter down the street. In all right, the size of this lad. Absolute unit. Victoria's lockdown will be extended beyond tomorrow and New South Wales is still weeks away from lifting theirs. While the majority of people are doing the right thing, some aren't. Like gym owner Reese who continues to defy health orders. We paid him a visit and he snapped. For those of you who don't know, a lot of Sydney right now, one of the biggest capital cities in the country, is under lockdown because of the spread of the Rhone Rhone. Basically meaning you can't leave the house and if you have a business that's not essential, you, you're fucked. Now I understand that people are scared, right? And I understand that the whole point of a lockdown is to minimise interactions and movement of people that could be infected. But, who the fuck are you to say someone's business or their job or their livelihood is not essential? Not essential for who? For you, it's pretty fucking essential for them. I'd like to point this out. When this video was made by a current affair, the financial support from the Australian government and the New South Wales government was fucking shithouse, right? Absolute shit. So no wonder people are angry. People were basically just told, sorry, you can't go to work. And they were given a little handout and they were basically fucked. Sorry about your mortgage, your bills, all that type of shit. You just, you can't go to work, big fella. No wonder this dude's fucking pissed off. I honestly, I snapped and I'm glad, I'm glad that I did. No, 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 f*** you, f*** you. Get the f*** away now or we'll sort you out. From lockdown to smackdown. Bring okay. your car down and what? what are you gonna do? Uh, no, no, what are you no. gonna I'm do? I'm getting off. What are you gonna do? Now, not to promote violence yet again, but lol. <laughs> Old mate is fucking huge and on the move. I don't blame the other fella for running away. I'd be fucking do the same thing. Am I suggesting that he's been taking a few Mexican supplements? Probably. Only if we had more footage that could act as evidence for my hypotheses. 
Gym owner Rhys Keane might be one of Australia's strongest men. But when it comes to following COVID rules, this powerlifting champ is a pandemic pest. How's the poor fucking fan there? What did that fan ever do to you, mate? Just blew air at you and you fucking got up and give it a hoogoos. No wonder the reporter ran. This dude's knocking out inanimate objects for fun. Imagine what he'd do to this bloke. He'd probably wear him as a condom. Keane's been boasting about flouting COVID restrictions at his Central Coast gym. And remember, we'll be open tomorrow if you need a gym to train at. Okay, so Karen Affair are mad because he's not shutting his doors when he's been told to shut his doors. He isn't running by the rules. Unlike other gym owners in lockdown, Keane's doors are still open. And he's encouraging his members to ignore COVID health advice and train in groups of more than two. I also get where old mate's coming from because he's got a lot of bills to pay and all this shit. He does have some different views. You say you're here for the people. Yep. But people are dying, Rhys. From what? From COVID. No, they're not. Really? Really, man. Keane's even like? bragged about being fined by police. He must be a mad anti-vaxxer, anti-corona. It's all a big conspiracy. At least that's what I took away from the interview when I first saw it. But if you go back and actually watch that and listen to where A Current Affair cut that interview short and started their own voiceover, it does reveal a little something something. You say you're here for the people. Yep. But people are dying, Reese. From what? From COVID. No, they're not. Really? Really, man. Keane's even like? bragged about being... He was cut off there and I think it was very unfair and it was quite a pretty shit move from the journalists at A Current Affair. They have cut him short basically when he's about to suggest that other people are dying of other things and at this point only one person had died from the outbreak in Sydney and bearing in mind this dude's nowhere near Sydney, he's over an hour and a half away from Sydney anyway, not that that matters, and he is suggesting that more people are dying from other things but we don't lock down about that, which I think is a fair point. But that disingenuous cut made him out to be a fucking nutcase and I think that's pretty piss poor form of current affair, you bunch of goose. Now Reese, the gym owner, the giant fucking, the, the big fucking dude, he was seen at the anti-lockdown protests in Sydney. Now this also was happening uh, at the same time that the government wasn't offering any support. They were basically just saying you can't go to work. My opinion of the lockdown protests was basically this. There were some people there doing the wrong thing, no doubt. And the crazy fucking, like, there was one lady there that said Jesus is my vaccine. Righto champ, good work. But the other people there, I think a lot of them were just fucking angry with the fact that the government said you can't go to work and here's a measly $600 a week to keep your family afloat. Now that may sound like a lot of money to a lot of people, but if your mortgage, like the last house that I, I rented, right, my rent every week was $575. If I get 600 bucks a week from the government, well, you don't have to be a fucking maths genius to work out that I've got, what, 25 bucks left over to spend on the pokies and that's not fair and that's why these people were protesting. I just think people are scared. They don't know how they're gonna pay their bills. They don't know how they're gonna pay their mortgage. They don't know how they're gonna put food on the table, pay their Pornhub premium account. They don't know how they're gonna do these things. As for his point of view, I found this article quite interesting. I'm sick of people being heavily affected by lockdowns to the point where they feel their only option left is suicide once they have lost everything. And I don't think it's a bad take at all. I think he's spot fuck it on. Now, a lot of people say it's bullshit that suicide numbers have risen. They point to the fact that the numbers are similar to the years before. Now, I don't know if you know this or you know anyone that's been overly depressed. A lot of the times people don't just feel shitty one day because they lose their job and kill themselves that night and they've never been depressed in their entire lives. That may be the case for some people, but for a lot of people, it's a long-term thing. It's a progression. And that's why I saw a particular set of statistics that I found quite confronting in an article published by the Australian Royal College of General Practitioners, suggesting, or not even suggesting, showing an enormous rise in the amount of antidepressants, anti-anxiolytic or anti-anxiety drugs, and antipsychotics in the year 2020 period. Look at this graph, they rise sharply after lockdowns are implemented. How does that extrapolate? How does it continue from there? Do these people get better when they went back to work? What if they're locked down again? What if they keep finding that this just doesn't get any better? Is that where we're gonna see the suicides from? Perhaps. So this argument by people saying, no, 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 no one's ever killed themselves because of lockdown. 
You're fucking not correct, dickhead. Constant lockdowns and fear porn spread by the media on a nightly basis is creating more and more people every single day needing medical intervention for their mental health. Now what is one of the things that can counteract all this shit feeling that people are having? This feeling of no hope. This feeling like it's never gonna get better. Exercise. What are they doing at gyms? They're shutting them down. Oftentimes for a lot of people, the gym is the only thing standing between them and a dark spiral to nothingness. And I think shutting them is terrible. Now that we've discussed all the boring details about vaccines and Ronas and lockdowns, let's get back to watching this giant monster chase a reporter. Hey, you understand? I don't care, my hey, man. Reese. You can f off. Hey. You can go as well. Hey, Bring okay, the cops okay. back down. And, well, what are you going to do? Hey, no, no, what are you no, going to no, do? I'm getting off. What are you going to do? I'm getting off. You're Oh, that motherfucker is the same width as that tree. No wonder he's sprinting for his life. He's like a gazelle running from a fucking elephant. To just have someone blatantly ignoring the rules. Where's your fucking masks? There's 50 of these left. Go and get them. <laughs> Reese Keen's face might seem familiar. We confronted the infamous powerlifting coach in 2017. Do you do more than pick up weights here? Do you pick up women? Where are you going? Young women alleged Keane was using his persona as one of powerlifting's greats to seduce them at a Christian gym. <laughs> okay, so this isn't the first time a current affairs had a run in with this dude. Allegedly, he was trying to hit on chicks at a local Christian gym. And uh, what happened next may shock you. He is no longer a Christian. He's quite the opposite. Four years on, Keane has turned his back on God. Now he calls himself a Satanist. Jesus Christ, this is an amazing tale. <laughs> Fucking what? But there is one part that I saw in this whole story that made it almost make sense to me why he's so angry. And that's this little bit here. The gym junkie and his wife will soon be lifting a couple of extra kilos. I've got a baby coming in 10 days. I get no I... government assistance. Okay, you know okay that's all I'm here. You get paid, don't you? Look. You get paid to do this shit, don't you? Come on, let's doesn't that make sense why he's so angry? He's got a baby coming and he can't pay the fucking bills. I'd be fucking filthy. I'm lucky I've got you guys who buy the merch and YouTube and that type of stuff. I had to cancel 50 shows. That's a massive hit to me as a person. You know, it's an absolute killer for business. Thankfully, I have people who support the channel. For most other people, they're fucked. They're just fucked. And if you've got a baby on the way or you already got kids, no wonder you may spiral down into depression. It's a tough fucking time. And then on top of the government not giving you enough funding, a baby on the way, your business being closed, you allegedly being a, a bit of a steroid person, <laughs> maybe. I don't know, he's just fucking giant. Then this little twat from a current affair turns up, you probably explode too. Intimidating or attacking anyone is never the answer. But let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, to wrap this video up, that was pretty fucking funny. Be a good motherfucker, peace in the Middle East, me dick stinks, keep it moist, do a little bye bye.